Well, we're standing in a soybean field today because quite frankly, if we were standing in a corn field, you wouldn't be able to see us. But there is still work that can be done in corn today. We're gonna to talk about some late season corn spraying on your farm. We're gonna talk about weeds, insects, and diseases in corn right now. And frankly, if you're looking at corn that's getting pretty tall and you've got some weeds that are coming back, it is an eyesore out there, but it's really not hurting your yield that much. And it's not worth, in most cases, running over some crap trying to get it sprayed. You're better off just to take your losses right now and make changes to your weed control program for next year. Yeah, we do get questions about late season 2,4-D spraying, for example. You could go in and drop nozzle something with a high boy. Yes, you can do that, but don't forget, 2,4-D is really volatile, especially when it's really warm, like we have right now. And when you're in the middle of the summer, 2,4-D, in our opinion, just should not be sprayed because it can move very far and you'll hurt things like soybeans. It's real easy to knock five bushels off the soybeans and you don't even really notice that. So just don't take the chance. We wouldn't suggest spraying real late in the season and in corn. But when we start talking about fungicides, and insecticides, that's a little different ball game than trying to control late season weeds. Well, there are quite a few different insects that do like to impact your corn crop late in the season. And whether it's aphids that you see right around tassel time up towards the top of the plants, we're seeing a lot of them again this year. It could be the insects that are feeding on your ear, whether it's western bean cutworm, corn earworm. There are a lot of these insects now that haven't been addressed with BT products that you do still need to worry about and spray with an insecticide. Yeah, and don't forget about corn rootworm beetle even though we have VT3 corn or triple stack corn so you can control your rootworm remember that's only on 80% of your acres you don't want to have all kinds of rootworms out there in the first place and I'll just tell you on our farm we still used insecticide on just about all of our rootworm corn this spring because with five or six or seven dollar corn, I'm not taking any chances that we can have rootworm problems. So what I'm saying is, if you're already going out there and you're going to be spraying fungicide, for example, you might as well throw some insecticide in if you have aphids, some of the other bugs Darren was talking about, maybe spider mites, and corn rootworm beetles are going to be out in your field at this point. You can stop them now before they lay their eggs which will hatch next year as rootworms and will cause feeding injury on your plants. And really the key is to do some scouting and to know where to look on these plants for the different insects that you've got. So get out there, look all over your corn plants and see what there is because now is the time. If you're doing an application with fungicide especially, you can save a trip over the field and do both at the same time. Well, to talk about that fungicide just a little bit more, it's really been a big deal this year. A lot of people are already spraying. What we're looking for, you want to make sure you're waiting until after the corn has tasseled and once you've got some silking out there, that's about the right stage to be spraying fungicide. As we talked earlier this summer, don't spray that fungicide too early. You don't want to spray it before your field is fully tasseled. You have to wait until a little bit later. That's when you get the best result. So when you're out there looking for fungicide or looking at spraying fungicide, what should you be looking for? Can you scout for diseases? <laughs> this is a good debate and Brian and I like to talk about this. You sure can scout for diseases, but it's really important for you if you're going to spray fungicides and you want to have good results to get out there before that disease takes over your field. If you're seeing some disease out there, chances are you may be a little bit too late, especially if you have to call somebody else in to spray. They're going to need a little bit of lead time. And let me tell you, this year there are a lot of farmers spraying fungicides. So if you're looking for an aerial applicator, get him lined up now if you're going to be spraying in a week or two because chances are you may already be down on the waiting list a little bit. Well, let's face it. I mean, now is the time to spray in a lot of fields across the country. So if you don't already have it lined up, it might not happen for you. And let's say you end up having to spray three weeks after tasseling. It's really pushing it. If you've already got disease that's really set in, you've lost a bunch of that yield potential you could have gained with the fungicide. Well, if you've got a pick field, say that you can't get it all done, and you say, well, I can only pick a certain amount of fields, that's all I can get done. Look for corn on corn acres, that's where you're gonna see your best gains from using a fungicide, because chances are with that residue from last year, you're going to have well, some diseases I'll, I'll, that I'll are debate. Over winter. Yeah, I'll debate with you on that. I think it's variety dependent more than anything. The trouble that's, is, they release so many new varieties all the time, we can't get a real good handle on that, because they come out with new varieties every single year, basically replacing half the varieties on the market. So you get these new varieties out and you don't really know if they're disease tolerant or disease resistant. Even what they say in the books isn't always right because they haven't had much testing with a lot of them. Well, that's the whole thing. You have to rely on your seed provider and talk to them about these varieties that you're gonna be planting and try to learn as much as you can. 
The other thing you can do is watch other parts of the country. They're planting a lot of the same hybrids that you are. You can see what's happening there and which hybrids are getting a response from using fungicide. Well, I guess the most important thing that we're trying to, to, to stress to you today is don't give up on your corn crop just because it's eight feet tall or 10 feet tall. There are still some things you can potentially do to increase yield. Yeah, it's in our opinion too late to be spraying for weeds, but it's still time to spray for fungicide in a lot of fields across the country and definitely to look at insecticides because there are a lot of insects that BT corns do not control. Well, it may be too late to spray in corn for some of the weeds, but this weed really isn't a big problem in corn anyway. Have you seen our Weed of the Week on your farm?